day 211 of the Trump administration, and the White House is now without the man routinely parodied on SNL as the Grim Reaper. Steve Bannon is out. He says he resigned. Sources are saying he was fired. White House says it was a mutual decision, let's say, between Bannon and his human antithesis in so many ways. General John Kelly, the new White House chief of staff. Bannon left the White House, and as quickly as you could say alt-right, he was right back where he started at Breitbart and full of action word quotes for the reporters who talked to him. He was greeted at his old shop with the headline, Populist Hero Stephen K. Bannon Returns Home to Breitbart. And a word about how we got here. According to the New York Times, Trump was annoyed that Bannon landed a Time magazine cover back in February, which called him the great manipulator. The president told the Wall Street Journal in April, quote, I'm just saying that Mr. Bannon is a guy who works for me. He's a good guy, but I make my own decision. The author of the current best seller about Bannon was told by those inside the White House president didn't like the photo on the cover or the fact that Bannon's name was above his. Then the new chief of staff arrived, John Kelly, the disciplined button-down former four-star Marine general. Despite Bannon's years in the Navy, the two men didn't mesh. Politico reports, quote, Kelly didn't understand what Bannon did, why he had a PO, what Bannon did, rather, why he had a PR portfolio, why he seemed to cause so much trouble with colleagues, and why he was so widely disliked. Then earlier this week, with rumors swirling about Bannon's future, listen to how the president responded when asked about them. I like Mr. Bannon. He's a friend of mine. But Mr. Bannon came on very late. You know that. I went through 17 senators, governors, and I won all the primaries. Mr. Bannon came on very much later than that. Uh, and I like him. He's a good man. Uh, he is not a racist, I can tell you that. He's a good person. He actually gets a very unfair press in that regard. But we'll see what happens with Mr. Bannon. We all know how that ended up for Mr. Bannon. We should also report that in the business of politics, where they truly do eat their young, there's already intense speculation over whether two other kind of Bannonites, Sebastian Gorka and Stephen Miller, will be long for the West Wing under General Kelly. Immediately after today's Bannon news, followed quickly by Breitbart announcing their former boss was returning, Bannon, who does not suffer from low self-esteem, let's just say, told a reporter, quote, I feel jacked up. Now I'm free. I've got my hands back on my weapons. Someone said, it's Bannon the Barbarian. I'm definitely going to crush the opposition. There's no doubt. I build an effing machine at Breitbart, and now I'm about to go back knowing what I know, and we're about to rev that machine up. And rev it up we will do, he added this ominous claim. The Trump presidency that we fought for and won is over. We still have a huge movement, and we will make something of this Trump presidency, but that presidency is over. It'll be something else, and there will be all kinds of fights. There will be good days and bad days, but that presidency is over. Who said Friday Night Lights? Much to discuss on a Friday night, and so let's bring in tonight's lead-off panel. Kristen Welker, our NBC News White House correspondent who spent the day reporting from New Jersey, where the president had been staying during his working vacation. He's already in Camp David for the weekend. Jonathan Lemire, White House reporter for the Associated Press. Philip Rucker, White House bureau chief for The Washington Post. And Jonathan Swan, national political reporter for Axios. He reported early this morning, long before Bannon was gone, that officials indeed expected him to be gone. Uh, Jonathan Swan, I have to tell you, two nights ago, you were here with us when Bannon had given those two odd print interviews, oddly empowered. You were the first to make a point that looking at his quotes, he sounded like a president to you. You noted the president doesn't like that. It's unbecoming on other people who aren't president. Walk us through today and the anatomy of this story for you. Well, this was done uh, long before today. Uh, Donald Trump, we reported at Axios on Saturday, last Saturday, that Donald Trump has been telling people that Steve Bannon was a leaker. He told multiple people that. Uh, 
I was told a few days later he even told Steve Bannon that in front of uh, at least one other person. Uh, Donald Trump was fed up with Steve Bannon. He was saying things like, who does this guy think he is? Uh, he thought that Steve Bannon was a self-indulgent, uh, uh, had created this myth that he had uh, built the election victory, that he was the architect. He very much resented that book that you discussed, uh, the, the Josh Green book uh, earlier, where he uh, people close to Trump and, and Trump himself believed it was a vanity biography of Steve Bannon. Uh, and all of these things came together uh, with a senior staff in the West Wing that was entirely united against Steve Bannon. You described earlier Stephen Miller as a Bannonite. In, in no way, apart from ideologically, it was Stephen Miller at the end of Bannonite. Uh, his loyalties were no longer with Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon had about two people uh, in the White House who remained loyal to him by the end, and, and none of them at the top ranks. So all of those things came together, and people then, when John Kelly came in, told Steve Bannon, uh, sorry, told John Kelly that Steve Bannon was encouraging the outside campaign against uh, General H.R. McMaster. Kelly was was uh, stunned by that and uh, horrified by that. Steve Bannon told people he wasn't involved in it, but nobody in the West Wing believed that. So all of these things came together. Uh, he was fired. You know, you're hearing this, the, the, the resignation. That was really a face-saving conversation, but um, he was told that his time was up. Let's also not forget, I, 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 I'm, re I'm remembering that uh, Bannon said there's no military option in North Korea, said the man Th that with interview no stars was on his shoulder. T to be really clear, though, I, I, I will still stick by my reporting on that story. That was the one interview that he really did not intend that to be on the record. That was just purely Bannon excited about a China ally, and it was truly a blunder, that interview. Wow, I guess so. He was on the phone with a veteran journalist with a progressive-leaning website. Kristen Welker, uh, in the flesh. I thought you lived in a television for a couple months <laughs> I there. I do exist. It is good to see you in person. We never get to see you in the uh, studio. Thanks for coming over. I'm also reminded. Uh, Camp David was a day trip today for an Afghanistan right. meeting. President's back in Bedminster uh, tonight. So talk about Bannon's uh, bailiwick. Chief strategist was an interesting title. Mm -hmm. A lot of people agreed he had no business on the National Security Council, and he was kind of uh, eased off of that early on. But how big a gulf does he leave, I guess, is the other way of asking. Well, in one sense, Brian, this was the president's touchstone to his base. Uh, he was the person who was there are reminding the president of all of the reasons that he got elected and all of those promises that he made out on the campaign trail, whether that be over trade or immigration, when you had the president come out and announce that he was pulling out of the Paris Climate Agreement, that was something that was very much championed by Steve Bannon and deposed by Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. So in that sense, he's lost his touch tone. The question is, how much will it matter? Will this impact the president's actions a great deal. Look at what we saw this week, Brian, the fact that he came out and made those very controversial comments about Charlottesville. If you believe the timing of this, then Steve Bannon was already out when the president made those comments, when after the attack in Madrid, you had the president mm -hmm. come out and revive that debunked myth. That is all Donald Trump. That's not Stephen Bannon. You can't point the finger at him for those actions, again, if you believe this timeline that he was already out. So I think the gulf that he leads is a big question mark. Mark, what will we see from the president's base? Will some of that support start to erode? Um, but I don't think you're going to see a big shift in this president. Donald Trump is Donald Trump. Jonathan Lemire, you reminded uh, Associated Press readers, we always call it the first draft of history. Thank you. Um, Bannon's role during the campaign, which is really useful to remember. That's right. He, he came in at a low moment for Donald Trump. He and Kellyanne Conway both came in in late August. Uh, Trump was trailing badly in the polls. Uh, he sort of encouraged Trump, who didn't need much encouraging, to fight, fight, and fight, even harder than he did before. And he did some things that are interesting. He shaped, it's much more, honed it as more of a populist, nationalist right. view. Injected what some suggested were some conspiratorial elements to it. Dark warnings about globalists, about corporate bankers, about the elites. Some of it vaguely anti-Semitic, according people, to critics. People have charged. And he also really honed the president's attacks 
on Hillary Clinton. That at the time, Trump was still sort of rewaging the primary and attacking the Republican establishment. Bannon really got him to focus on his Democratic opponent. And he was someone who was pretty effective at changing the narrative. A moment from the campaign that I will certainly never forget is in a week or so after the Access Hollywood tape dropped, and then women came forward uh, and suggested that Donald Trump had done to them what he boasted about in that tape, which was to, to grope them without their consent. Before the second presidential day, debate with Hillary Clinton, yeah. they had a surprise press conference with all of these women who accused Bill Clinton of sexually abusing them. Mm -hmm. I was part of the press pool that day, the small group of reporters that travels in, Shocking. and there, there's Shocking. footage of me and other reporters with our mouths open one, looking at this and hard to believe. Um, Philip Rucker, you get in many ways the hardest question. This verbiage from Bannon about the fight and his weapons and about the presidency being over. This is a guy who's referred to the West Wing Democrats very derisively. Um, tell me what all that means and tell me who has the most to lose and worry about with him on the outside. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Well, it, it, if we're to believe that General John Kelly uh, removed Bannon, fired Bannon in order to instill order and discipline in this White House, I don't know uh, how long that's going to last because Bannon is signaling that he's going to wage war uh, with his former colleagues from the outside. Uh, we know that for months now he's been feuding with Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law and senior advisor, with Gary Cohn, the top economic advisor, and with H.R. McMaster, an another general uh, and a national security advisor. And I think he's just going to continue to do this from the outside. Uh, his allies were telling uh, me and my colleagues and, and our other panelists here uh, that, that Bannon's going to go to war over this agenda. He's going to fight to try to keep Trump honest uh, with his campaign promises, to keep Trump, uh, to, to encourage his nationalist impulses from the outside. And we should also remember that Bannon is still going to have a connection to Trump. Uh, remember Corey Lewandowski, the campaign manager mm -hmm. early on? He was fired from the campaign, but he continues to talk to the president to a advise him informally. He has the cell phone number. Uh, I expect Bannon's going to continue to have some link uh, into Trump himself personally. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.